I decided to up the volume and lower the area that I'm recording this video at from the previous two videos. Uh, after my editing, I feel that I may have upped the volume too much, but we're going to produce it, send it out, and see. I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is all about character sheets. Have fun. So I decided to make character sheets to help my players keep track of the things that I find most important. Every game is different. Every game has different things that they care about. Uh, some games are very RP focused. Some games are very hack and slash. Uh, but they all have different things that they care about. So I mean, up here you have the player name. That's pretty simple. I can put almost any name. Well, I can easily fit anyone's name in there because it's just how we refer to each other. So I don't need like first, middle, all the aliases and stuff. But under character names, I have an ex a decently large section. Height and weight matter. Age matters. Birthday is actually important for my players because they get bonuses for it. Actually, I think I'm going to give a little more space there. Level progression clearly matters, but as you see, I don't have level up here, and that's because they keep track of their level with their backside and with their health, which I'll show you at the bottom. I have a pretty decent sized area for appearance, but this is going to fit everything that they want to describe their character's appearance with. And down here, I have the standard ability scores, and modifiers. Right here I have armor. These are all of their various speeds. These are their attack and damage bonuses based on what type of weapon they're using, if they're proficient in it. Uh, I realize that damage doesn't really switch, but attack bonus does change based on proficiency. The other section is for things like Barbarian's Bonus Rage Damage. Okay, over here you have Race, Subrace, Background, and Feats. Down below here I have the Proficiency Modifier, which is purely based on character level, not class level. So this doesn't really... This isn't going to change for different characters based on different things. It's going to be this based on your level, and that's it. Then I have an easy way to keep track of how much health you gain per level. Hit die, constitution modifier, other. Like toughness or that dwarven thing. Then you write in your level, your health per level. So if you're doing 1d8 plus 2, first level is going to be 10. Next level might be, let's say you roll a 6, it's going to be 18. And then you keep going through like that, because that helps you keep track of what you had at each level. And it helps keep track of whether or not you leveled, and whether you did your health. Unfortunately, a lot of times we'll either level at the end of a game session or we'll level at the beginning of a new game session. And sometimes my players and I have forgotten whether everyone leveled or not. Over here we have all of the deities in game and we have how many days for their calendar. By the way, the calendar starts in spring, so Dretcher's 40 days are in spring. Saving throws and skills are all colored according to their abilities. That makes it a little bit easier for my players to keep track of things, though I do have a couple of colorblind players, which actually doesn't help at all. Um, so, 
actually it makes it a lot more difficult for them. So the saving throws are pretty simple. You just mark whether you're proficient in it right over here or over here. And then you either write the number or you don't. Your choice. A lot of the peop a lot of my players will mark it over here and write the number over here, or they'll just write numbers in. Uh, or they'll just mark it. Skills are the same way. I took out medicine and put in endurance. I feel that endurance as a skill is much more useful than medicine. First off and in general. And second off, I feel that the herbalist kit can basically do what medicine could do. So now it's, if you have training in the herbalist kit, you get all those benefits that you could have gotten through the skill of medicine. The herbalist kit also is a substitute for the poisoner's kit as well. So it's become significantly more useful. Uh, endurance handles things like holding your breath too long. These are things that you choose to do that normally you would just have a constitution skill check. You would just make a constitution ability check. Not a saving throw, because it's not something happening to you. It's an ability check because you're choosing to do it. Now I've replaced most of those things with endurance. So you can choose to have proficiency in it, basically. The weapons, shields, and armor are all listed up here. If you have proficiency, you have proficiency. Great. I made a short list of tools for my players. This helps them really decide what tools they want rather than having to make up their own tools when they get a tool proficiency. I also have a short list of performances uh, which gives some extra stuff like juggling, storytelling, tumbling, and dance. The kits that I have listed are only these four. And you actually need the kit to perform the item, to perform the thing. But if you have proficiency in it, you obviously get a bonus. Vehicles, I added flight and burrowing vehicles. While they aren't really... Well, they, aren't e they don't even exist in my game. But my players might find a way to make them exist and there are I guess a couple of flying brooms out there and a flying carpet so proficiency in these things will help you stay on your vehicle and utilize your vehicle when things are happening gambling I limited the number of gambling choices that people have um, but I included things like fights and races that way you can be proficient at gambling on these things. Oh, that guy looks tough, but the other guy looks quicker, so maybe I'll bet on him. The chances are the tough guy is going to win, but the odds are better, so I'll try and bet on the other guy. But really, I'll just make it a roll. Um, so proficiency, again, gets you a bonus here. Languages. I took out a lot of languages. The main languages that my races have are Common, Dwarven, Elven, Gnomish, Goblin, and Draconic. Deep Speech is basically the common for the Underdark. Sign language is used by certain groups, especially sailors. Thieves Can't is, well, it's used by criminals, but it's basically just a language of slang. Go and watch uh, Austin Powers and uh, that the movie where his father was there and where they were talking and all that British slang. It's kind of like that. Druidic is obviously very rare and I've essentially made replaced Sylvan with Druidic. So a lot of my fae speak Druidic and nothing else. Aquinteran, Oren, and 
Ingen, Ignen, Ignen, I think, are all the languages of the plains. I have retained those. But my players aren't usually going to know these four. Just like they aren't usually going to know Abyssal, Celestial, Infernal, or Primordial. Which are the other planes. Um, with Druidic being the Feywild. So, none of these eight languages are going to be very common. Druidic is probably going to be the most common of the nine uncommon languages. And the rest of these are going to be more used, which is why they're up top. And this is the front character sheet for all of my players. It's all of their basic information on one page. Now, I also have a back sheet. And the back sheet is very, very, well, class-oriented. So, for instance, if someone wants to make a barbarian, I'll print out this barbarian sheet. It includes all their rage stuff, their ability scores and things for feats. Then down here it includes all of the things that they get at level. This little extra box here, you just check it when you're level whatever. Level 7, you've got Feral Instinct and everything above it. This has made leveling so much easier for my players. They don't have to look things up and figure it out. They just go, oh, well, at 7th level, I get this. And the one thing that I get down here, health. And yay, now I'm leveled. So, I also include the different paths that you can go. Now, not every sheet has every type of path, so a lot of times my players have to have that decided before I print the sheet out. So, for instance, if you're going with one of the paths from Xanther's Guide to everything, you're going to get a different barbarian sheet. The other sheet that I use, the other thing, one of the other big things that I have that my players really, really enjoy is a Dungeon Master screen that I made myself. And on the back of this Dungeon Master screen, I have a few things, like all of the actions they can do. And I should let you guys know that I did change some rules, because everyone homebrew stuff. So if you see any discrepancies, that's why. So, I've got things like grappling, um, shoving, disarming, my mounted combat rules, the squeezing rules, all this stuff that players can go, what's that rule again? And then I just go, well, it's right here. Actually, underwater combat's going to be very useful in our next campaign. In addition, I have all of the damage types. There are 13. On another sheet, I have, as you can see, all of the uh, conditions. And up above that, I have the short rest and long rest rules that my group plays by. Um, normal short rest and long rest is an hour and a day but mine are significantly longer because we play a more well we play a more travel oriented and exploration game so they might travel for 10 days before hitting a battle they get a couple long rests in between there uh, whereas if they only travel I very very rarely do multiple battles in the same day so I needed to make short rest be eight hours. 
heroic feat replaces inspiration. I just call it a different thing. Um, and actually, apparently, I forgot to rewrite this. Um, and I changed a little bit of what it can do. You can gain advantage on any one roll, gain an extra bonus action, or gain 1d4 to any roll. Um, but the reason I changed it is because I didn't want people to get confused with Bardic Inspiration and with the heroic feat that they get. And the last page on my four-page DM screen is initiative score, character, and player. This really helps my players keep track of who's going when. This is on a... I have it laminated, so I use a dry erase pencil, or pen, to mark it. Then I have skill challenges, and I'll usually choose three three easy skills, three other skills, and the successes and failures. And lastly, I have the rules for overland travel. Um, which includes endurance to move faster. And like I said, we do a lot of exploration, we do a lot of travel in my game. So... My players do do a decent number of endurance checks to try and move faster, and it has happened that we have gotten exhausted. Um, our mounts and our other things have gotten exhausted. For ships, I think I'm going to add a rule in for damage to the hull. And I do have to still homebrew some ship rules for things like that. Um, but yeah, so this is basically the back of my character sheet, or the back of my DM screen, that all my players can see all game long. On my side, I usually have this, this is one page. So this gives me essentially, well, this gives me a lot. It gives me all these skills and stuff, that way I can move things around, um, which I still have to edit some of this. It gives me a smaller version, and I used a much smaller font on mine because I'm so much closer. Smaller version of all of the statuses, a lot of the rules. It also gives me all of the deities and what they stand for. Uh, the problems with exhaustion, the various things people can do on a turn, some weather stuff. And that's all on one page. And I actually don't have my other pages saved here for some reason. That's really odd. All right. Well, the other pages that I'm currently using on my DM screen are one page just filled with names and personalities. Names, personalities, race, which I went over how I form in the last, well, which I went over a little bit in the last video, and which I form through Cityographer, which I'll go over in a future video. Um, I also include one page of basically wealth, the cost of things. Um, that way I can do a lot, very quick trading with my players without looking up how much everything costs. I've got it on one page on my character sheet. And the last page is the treasures that I'm using for my game. So all of the various little treasure special treasures that I plan on give giving plus in treasures per encounter and treasures per mini boss 
which I have a chart that I roll for using a d12. I have no idea why it's why these pages aren't up here, but I'm going to have to apparently retype them. As you can see, I was playing around with a few different page setups. I was doing this for a while to try and remember every game, and I was passing these out every game. That was interesting and different. Um, I've tried a lot of different things. Also, just a quick heads up. I do run another campaign called Rolling Blind. And in that campaign, my characters do not have the character sheet that you saw above. Um, they don't have this. And they don't have their class page. Because they don't know their class. What they have instead is this. They get an action type, name, and what it can do. They know their armor. They know their weapons. And they don't actually know the bonus. All they know is what die they roll for their weapons. And these are some other magical items and what those items do. Then on their back page, all they have is literally an inventory list. How much... Oh, by the way, these are supposed to be wafers. I changed that, didn't I? Yes, I did. So these are bars. Wafer. I'll just put waif and coin. So they have literally their cash, their gems, which we do a lot of different gems. Um, these top gems, which include dragon scales, are all considered precious materials. These are semi-precious. These are unprecious, and these are tradable. So a glass bead, you just trade it. It's not worth much. Quick interjection. The reason that I can't find my exchange rate on anything is because I had wallet cards give, that I gave to my players that included the exchange rate where they actually wrote down all of their currencies. Also, it is 1,000 or it is one gold to 800 copper, not one gold to 1,000 copper, because each copper is theoretically worth a dollar twenty-five. Thank you very much. I do not have on here the exchange rate, which is odd of me, because oftentimes in the past I have had the exchange rate. But I don't. Um, lots of other sheets that I've made for these guys. Do I have it on here? No. Oh. Okay, so I don't have the exchange rate up there. I also don't have it on my... Huh. I don't have it on my DM screen. Well... Essentially, I use a very different exchange rate. I have it on the inside of my DM screen, which is not at all helpful to my players. So, that's just great. Yeah, I have no idea why I... Uh, that's super weird. So essentially, the exchange rate goes 32 copper equals 1 silver. 25 silver equals 1 gold. And the reason I did that is that each gold in my game is essentially worth 
$1,000. If I need to price something out like a shovel or a sword, I price it out, I look at what that price would cost, what that item would cost, and then I divide that by a thousand, and that's how much gold it is. Um, and the reason I went with the exchange rate of 32 to 20 to 1, and then 25 to 1, was because when I was looking up Roman coins, that was one of the primary exchange rates that I found for those things. So I decided that that's what I would use for my game. It makes it way too confusing and complicated for most people, but it makes it so that in my game, because one gold is worth a thousand copper rather than a hundred copper, gold has become severely more useful, or copper has become severely more useful. And my players will actually get copper, and it will be usable for a meal. It might cost them five copper for a meal, and that's a cheap meal. Or it might cost them 15 copper for a meal, and that's a ex more expensive meal. But they aren't really, they aren't even usually paying silver for a meal, unless it's exceptionally expensive because each copper is worth about a buck twenty-five so each silver is worth about forty dollars so if you're just buying for yourself you probably aren't spending a full silver so yeah that's how that all goes and I'll I don't think I'm gonna use this sheet for my, in fact, I know I'm not going to use this sheet for my game. My uh, my coastal adventures game, which is going to be online, because I'm going to be using little bags on Tabletop Simulator for them to keep track of a lot of these coins and stuff, and I'm going to be using the notebook for them to keep track of their items or maybe I'll use cards probably the notebook so that is essentially character sheets oh by the way I do do a decent bit of homebrew on my character sheets so if you notice noticed anything weird it was by design and almost all of it has been play tested in my games. Uh, one very cool, one very interesting thing that I liked was the Variant Ranger, which I switched. Oh, actually, I only edited this one, which I switched uh, all my Rangers to. They now use the Variant Ranger rather than the original ranger. I did edit it a little bit because humanoids in general was just too much. So I made this two races and giants include the trolls as well. So that's also two races except it's a greater favorite enemy. Um, I have considered knocking this down to just one race but then it becomes too weak. Beasts are a little bit on the weak side, but you get what you get. But yeah. So that is my character sheets. I hope you guys enjoyed. And not all of my character sheets are really fleshed out. For instance, uh... This is my wizard character sheet, and as you can clearly see, I have abjuration, conjuration, divination, and enchantment on this sheet. But you obviously can only go one path, so you have to only check off one section. 
And I might change that and just have one section on each sheet rather than four sections on, e on two different backs. And most of this stuff's fairly simple. Um, I do not have a sheet yet designed because we were doing cards for the longest time. So I do not have a sheet designed for spells. One thing that we do, we, st we started to go with the variant rule for spell slots based in the book, I think it's the DMG. There's a variant rule for how to do spell slots based on points. And then I just ended up saying, okay, a first level spell slot's worth one point, a ninth level spell slot's worth nine. And that's how much it costs to cast that spell. So, at fourth level, you could cast five second level spells, or ten first level spells, or some mixture therein. You still can't cast third level spells, because you don't have the capacity to channel that much energy at one time until fifth level. But at that level, sure, you can cast third level spells. And yeah, you might be able to cast five third level spells in one day. And that's really cool. But a lot of these second level and first level spells have very good uses. So I found that it hasn't overpowered things in the lower to mid levels. And I don't know how it's going to work out in the higher levels. Because we haven't had any games that have gotten past 11th. So, that is something that I did with spells. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed. I, uh, I found that making character sheets based on class has really helped with the leveling. And I hope that you guys consider doing something like that for your characters, too. I should find a way. Actually, a friend's been talking to me about making a Patreon if these videos work out. I will probably, if I make such a Patreon, I will most likely share these character sheets and other homebrewed stuff on my Patreon. Yeah. Anyway, thanks.